representing. Yes. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, we have got a bit of a struggle with that one today. And I can't put off this agony any longer. So I'm going to have to do it. Now my plan is, right, as originally I was going to take the engine mountings off, drop the engine down a little bit to give myself a bit more room. Mm -hmm. Ideally, most people who do these seem to take the gearbox out, which does seem a much easier option, but I don't fancy doing that on my back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the EGR valve off first, and then unbolt it, and hope for the best. So wish me luck. So the initial part of this is going to be to take this off, which is two eight millis, and then it just pulls off. Disconnect the hoses, which just click out. Go and this just pulls off. Now the next part of the equation is going to be to remove the EGR valve. Now do you like how I am talking about this as though I know the correct way to do it as well. I've done one before. Yeah I haven't. But if you're seeing this then I have succeeded. Right, so as you can see there there is the EGRA valve which we are going to remove um, because it's probably in the way. Now that's an 8mm and there is a bolt there. I can't really explain where the bolts are, but there's one there, right? There's one going that way and then there's two on the back. So let's take them out. Um, and once you undo them bolts, that comes off. So if you see where that is, in line with that on this side, because there's a flange on the bottom of it, and we like our flanges. And there's this one going backwards the and the i forgot to mention this is a 3.2 litre transitor which is actually quite rare um, and probably gives me less room but let's uh, undo these and take the shitter off so there's one of the substantial bolts and the other one i don't know it just can actually be seen the other one is the look at that you can see it better than I can. So that's the bolt for this little flange that goes down there. And there will be a gasket in there that will fall out. And I suspect that we're probably only about 20 minutes from realising we shouldn't have fucking started. So these are the other bolts on the egg revolve. So we'll take them out and then drop this out of the way. And look at that. You can see. Maybe I can see. There it is. So when you take the bolts out, the EGR valve falls off, and then all, right? And usually you have to retrieve the gaskets. There's one. There's the other. And then we'll have a look what access we've got now. There's that shitter. Right, so, we need to disconnect this water hose here. If you can't see, that water hose. You need to focus your turd. You need to focus on everything else apart from what I'm trying to show. And there's bolts here, which need to come off. And there's a water hose on the other side, and there's bolts as well. So let's crack on with that. Right, so at this moment, we're going to move on to the side. Now, this lower pipe here, this is the one that fits onto the cooler. But it's easier to disconnect it from here than it is. Well, I'm assuming it's going to be easier to disconnect it from here, isn't it? It's from the cooler. So let's disconnect that, and then we'll pull it all out together. That. So let's move that out of the way. As you can see, not much water is coming out because there's not much water left in it because it's all underneath. Oh, it's all gone underneath. Right, and then, can I see this here? Hold on. Right, there's the, as you can see, it's leaking from the, uh, how do people go past when I'm trying to talk shit? Right, as you can see, it's leaking from the cooler and this is where it bolts on which is right there and then there's one underneath and there's not a lot of room so we're going to try and get them out now 
Uh, I don't know if anyone remembers, but recently in this video, somebody who sounds a lot like me said, we seem to approach a point where always we haven't got involved. And now I'm underneath the van getting dripped on by dirty water with rust in it and shit. So that moment has no thoughts. But if you're stupid enough to want to get involved with mechanic and do shit like this, then I sort of brought it on myself, and I really. So that's one of the uh, the bolts out, which goes from the manifold to the cooler. And the other one, I need to go back up top for. Which means getting up. And my belly's stuck underneath the sump. Sick. Right, we're getting there. That's the other bolt out of the left side, which I just got with a ratchet from down here. So now we have to get the cooler out. I'm going to leave this. Can you see that? There we go. Hold on. I'm going to leave this elbow on, and I'm going to unbolt the mounting part for that, and I'm going to pull it out and try and lift it up with this pipe still connected because I can't well it'd be a struggle to disconnect that rubber pipe more than anything else down there um so let's get I think that's a 10 mil again I think most of these are 10 mils and 8 mils, so that's all I've got to use. I haven't had to use many tools. Just some patience. Right, so that's the bracket bolt out, and it might be free, but it still might not fit out. Might have to take that off. I think it's not going to fit out, is it, with that pipe connected? Let's see. It might do. Right. Let's see if that'll pull out with both hands. Right, so with a bit of struggling and wiggling, this is take two because the fucking form wasn't recording because I've got wet hands. But this is take two. And as you can see, that's that's the original EGR cooler and I was regretting leaving these attached. These these rubber holes is because they connected to everything when I was trying to wiggle it out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to disconnect them. Now I can get some clamps on them, some, some pliers on them, and try and retrieve the gasket that goes out of the wherever that is. If it's falling down or what, I'm not sure because Fords didn't have any and they wanted, to wait, wanted me to wait a very long time for them. They said they were a manufacturer's only part, so we ain't got new gaskets, but I'm sure we'll be alright. Isn't the best, but it's better than nothing. Right, so now we've got it completely off and as you can see it has been leaking well first of all it actually looks like they've got the right one to fit on which is preferential witness where it has actually been leaking from and that has been pissing out so we're going to unbolt that flange and stick it to this the way that that goes and then we're going to struggle putting the shitter back on or putting the new one on whichever way you want to look at it so now put this first doors back on in what i'm hoping is the correct orientation and then to clip these back in you just push down on that or you try and just push down on that and it doesn't work so we've clipped that back on and now we've got to feed this bastard back in there through the power of wishing and willpower. So I'm going to put the telephone down and try that and then come back when we're ready. Yeah, like we're going to be. This bolt, if you remember, came from the bracket on the end of this here. So, I'm going to put that in to steady the unit, but it helps if I line it up to anything. Right, so 
I've just put that in loose because now this is gonna be fun. We've got to get that back in. I'm gonna put this. And it goes that way around. As you can see, there's more rust on this side because that side's cast iron, that side's on stainless steel. I'll put it back in and it'll come off. Not that it's going to make much difference. I would have preferred a new one, but there wasn't one available, as I have already said. So now I'm going to struggle getting that back into place down there. It's not something I think I'm going to be able to film. I might have to do it from underneath. Um, but you're not going to be able to see anything anyway because it is right fucking down there somewhere, as you can imagine. There's a the top of it. You can't even see where it goes. So we'll go try that. And also that's pretty good. I thought I'd get corked up and do it faster, but look. Fucking, okay. there we go. Stir it with my screwdriver. There we go. All right, so we have got the bolts started again. The ones, just go through this gasket and do as tight as I can get them with my fingers. So, I've got a really good ratchet where you can turn the end like a ratchet screwdriver, like an angled screwdriver to work, to work them in. But I might not bother going and getting it because it's buried somewhere. People keep going past and making noise. Um, it's very inconsiderate of them when I'm trying to film a video. And as you can also see, my uh, my glove disintegrated. So uh, go and get some dinner now and then finish this shitter off. This is the uh, the ratchet I was going on about. Right, it's a little Facon one. And what happens with it is you can turn the handle round like that, turn it backwards and forwards, and even ratchets. So that might help me, but it is quite bulky. So we'll see if that goes in and then uh, tighten these bolts up. Right, so this is the other flange bolt. And that ratchet would have been lovely. It helped at the top, but it didn't fit in at the bottom. So we're back on the, uh, the good old Aldi one. Just as we nip it up. Right, so the cooler is in place now. So let's put this pipe back on. I'll do that in a sec. And we'll put these pipes back in. Alright, so I'll put these pipes back on, and then it's just a case of putting the EGR valve back on, which uh, isn't too bad. It's uh, not actually been as bad as I thought it was going to be this job. So let's throw it back together, because now, as ever, it's fucking spitting. So the pipe, right, so the pipe's back on, and all the clips and shit are all put back to factory fresh. And then we're gonna put the EGRA back on, um, balancing gaskets in place, but it's no one near as bad as the gasket on the other side. So I am gonna do that now. Right, so, old one. And the new one is now on. So all we've got left to do is, I'm not just gonna to top it up with coolant because this has been running on water and KCL and fuck knows what else. Um, so I'm gonna do a coolant flush on it and then put new coolant in it. And then when it starts leaking again, it'll leak out 30 quid of coolant. Me! And that's Stephen, who's a knob. Right, so as I've already said, we're all back together. So we are gonna perform a quick coolant flush. I'm not going to leave it in overnight or anything like that. Just going to do a quick job. If I can open it. Right, so we'll empty the contents of this bottle into the coolant reservoir. And then we're going to top it up with water and run it up to temperature. And then drain it. You don't need to watch that, but I'm going to fill that with water until it's full. And then run it and then put some more water in it. It's quite simple really. Right, so now we've got water in it mixed with radiator flush and as you can see we are running on a fast idle. And now, we're fully up to temperature, or up to operating temperature. Right, and 
I'm gonna leave it a little bit and then I'm gonna drop the mix out. Right, so now it's been running for a good half an hour plus with a coolant flush in and there is supposed to be a drain but I can't find it so I'm just gonna set the hose off. Right, so that clip was more difficult to get off than it should have been but we've got that off and we're just going to drop the coolant out i said coolant this is before i get slated for dropping coolant out this is just water that's been in it's been filled up with water many times and it's got rust in it but it's been filled up with that it's been topped up that many times they're not coolant left in it plus it's raining so it's got to wash it away so we're going to let this drain out then we're going to flush it out see just water all right so it's full of fresh water now and i'm just burping it again and then i'm gonna rinse it through again just for a bit of peace of mind right so the hose is back on and it's empty again and it's been flushed through so now we're going to put some coolant in some nice new coolant so let's put that in at max level and we're going to start it and put the air out heating on full all that lot bits of air coming out and it'll uh that's the highest point so it will bleed itself this i'm assuming so because it has moved fast now we've just got to wait for the thermostat to open So that pipe's warm now, so the thermostat's still open. And that's what we've been working on. Then we're done. Chuck the temperature, heaters are working, new coolant, um, thermostat's open, fled up. That's it. So if you want to do this job, I'd advise against it. But actually, it wasn't that bad. They're a bit fiddly and a bit shit, but it wasn't. It wasn't as bad as I anticipated it was going to be. Um, just don't do it in the fucking rain. 